So, like yo, Holmes, there's an article by the Huffington Post that has been uh, floating around. It says, white athletes still standing for the anthem are standing for white supremacy. And, wow, what a divisive article. And one of the things that it, that it makes me wonder about is, do they, are they trying to get people to Are they wanting to prove the racists right? Is that what they're trying to do with this stuff? Because all this kind of thing does is it makes people start to look into why do we have these feelings about race? Why are these feelings in the back of our minds about race? Oh, you should fess up to it. It's like people don't want to fess up to that because it would require it would require that someone starts to back up their belief with facts. And unfortunately, there are facts out there that will legitimize racist people's opinions of a lot of this stuff. I'm sorry about that, but there are facts. Now, maybe we're going to have to fight against those facts with other facts. But uh, it says here, the absence of white athletes kneeling for the anthem Sunday was a particularly illustrative moment in white privilege. See, for white athletes, the anthem and the American flag do represent freedom, liberty, and whatever amorphous American values one might ascribe these symbols. So, from their view, kneeling would be disrespectful to the privileges a white supremacist nation affords them. I understand what they're saying. It's pretty caustic, but I understand what they're saying. We've all heard the typical argument against kneeling. Kneeling during the anthem disrespects the flag and the soldiers who fought for your right to protest and blah, 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 patriotism. I'll, I'll agree with you there. I will. Now, I'm not going to spend much time with the most obvious counter, but it's worth stating. In the fairy tale, we Americans tell ourselves where soldiers fight wars for freedom and not imperial conquests, the story says we're fighting for someone's right to protest, not the opposite. So using the troops as a cudgel against protest wholly misunderstands even our own national fairy tale. All right. So that's obvious enough, but what I'm talking about is this. If white athletes can't fathom kneeling because they feel soldiers fought for their rights and blah 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 patriotism it's because they are treated as full citizens and afforded those rights they imagine soldiers fought for interpreting their own experience as something more universal they struggle to understand why anyone would kneel indeed for them the anthem and the american flag represents promises fulfilled okay um, but it is, it, it's something that's available to everyone, but it, yeah. this is the problem of privilege. It skews our ability to grasp what the world looks like outside our view. But even in the terms of American values, uh, oh man, Copernic's point is quite straightforward. The promises that underlie those values remain unfulfilled for black Americans. This is this this does occur, but you're forcing people when you when you make articles like this, you're forcing people to look at the reasons why those values remain unfulfilled for black Americans. And some of the facts that are out there and the statistics that are out there are not pretty. They're not. And you're forcing people to look at those things. 
And you know what it's doing? It's creating racists. It's creating people who were normally really open-minded and really you know, sympathetic, and it's making them no longer care. Well, it shouldn't be that way. Well, tough. That's the way it is. So they go, this isn't a matter of opinion. Statistics reveal disparities along racial lines regarding wealth, education, healthy food, employment, health care, housing, wages, criminal charges, sentences, and practically every other imaginable measure of quality of life. This isn't a mistake of history or attributable to individual or cultural traits of the oppressed. These are the results of centuries of systemic white supremacy, plain and simple. All right, so let's let's uh, let's pick this apart a little more here. Okay, so they say this isn't a matter of opinion. Statistics reveal disparities along racial lines regarding wealth, education, healthy food. I don't know what they're. Let's let's look at this. Let's let's see this this link they've got here. It says healthy food. What 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 is this going to bring? Shit, I have to do something. Allow. All right. Unshared bounty. How structural racism contributes to to the creation and persistence of food desserts. Ow. Ow. Ouch. Just what? <sighs> Civilization as it is known today would have not have evolved nor can it survive without an adequate supply of food? Food is life. It is necessary. It is a necess It is necessity and pleasure, family and community, culture and power. Uh, so it's one that's written that way. Okay. Change modes, right? On how you have to read it. Uh, when plentiful and freely shared, food creates healthy communities and strong societies. When scarce or unfairly distributed, it damages and in time kills sp what okay i see okay yeah when scarce or unfairly distributed it damages and in time kills uh spirit body family community uh, shouldn't there be an and there whatever food touches everything and is just is never just food it is also a way of getting at something else who we are who we have been and who we want to be. Really? All, all of that, huh? Reminds me of the uh, the gang writing on uh, on Falling Down when uh, when Michael Douglas's character is standing by this rock. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Above all, food marks social differences, boundaries, bonds, and contradictions. In America, these social differences, boundaries, and contradictions are starkly reflected in the fact that 23.5 million Americans currently live in food deserts. Wow. Oh, I'm embarrassed now. I'm embarrassed now, but some of it's because they were showing things that I... All right. Food deserts, not desserts. Oh, I'm really embarrassed. I am really, really embarrassed. I should leave that in anyway. All right, 23.5 million Americans currently live in food deserts, urban and rural communities with no access or severely limited regular access to healthy and affordable food.
The concept of food deserts originated in the United Kingdom to describe newly built isolated public housing devoid of viable food shopping for residents. Since then, the term has been applied by policymakers, government officials, and researchers to low-income rural and urban communities within the United States, lacking convenient access to healthy food. Measurements used to identify food deserts vary. The U.S. government, for instance, defines an urban community lacking access to healthy foods as at least 500 people within a census tract living over, from, over a mile from a supermarket. The government specifically tracks low-income communities lacking access to supermarkets and focuses on census tracts with income at least 80% below the average income in the area. A leading research <coughs> group in the study of food deserts, the Marie Gallagher Research and Consulting Group, Gallagher, my quality picture with Gallagher is the guy that uh, wore the, the hair hat and, and has the sledge matic right? Anyway... Um, sorry, uh, defines food deserts as neighborhood blocks that are more distant from grocery stores than other blocks within a city. Okay, so now I know where this article is going. All right. So it's basically saying that some of the sections that of, of cities and towns that have the most, the highest number of minorities in them, particularly black people, uh, are often the furthest away from grocery stores. I, I get it. All right. I get it. They can't just say that, though. They've got to, oh, we've got to be scholarly about it. All right. So, statistics reveal disparities along racial lines in regarding wealth, education, healthy food, employment, health care, housing, wages, criminal charges, sentences, and practically every other imaginable measure of quality of life. Okay. One of the problems here is the same problem that we have when it comes to uh, the statistics about women not... Uh, not very many women are getting in, let's say, stem cell research, and uh, they're not getting in some of the hard sciences, and they're not getting involved in, in much IT work or, you know, other fields that could make them a lot of money. Um, that there aren't very, that, you know, women are very much still a minority in those areas. And they'll blame it on the system rather than on... I mean, okay, yes, I get that, I get that there are attitudes towards women that make, that contribute to women not wanting to go into those fields, but the truth of the matter is, most women just simply don't want to go into those fields. Now, maybe we should change the attitudes about about this, so maybe, excuse me, more women in the future may want to go into those fields. But you can't blame any sort of legal structure or anything like that on why they don't. And the same thing applies within black communities. You can't blame some sort of legal structure as to why they're not get, they're not doing more things. There, there are so many in, in black communities. You have so many families that don't have males in them, and then yet we're we're pushing this narrative more and more that uh, fathers aren't really they're not really necessary for uh, raising kids. And it's like, um, no, we 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 need to promote the idea of fathers being in their kids' lives. We we need to promote that more. Or we're going to continue to see more of this shit. You know, in, in many black families, the fathers are absent. That needs to change. Those attitudes need to change. But that's never going to be brought up. It's always, it's going to be white people's fault because it's easier to blame, to put the blame on a group of people than it is, you know, on a separate group of people than it is to actually try to tackle issues that are within, commun uh, you know, communities that are struggling. 
So, it's, it's frustrating. Um, some of the, some of the sad truths of things are that, that video that I, that I, my, my last video, my, my previous video, where I was asking all these questions, there were some that I left out. One of them was, why is it that black males have some of the lowest suicide rates in the country? Why is that? Another one is, you know, why when the mirror test, and when a mirror test is, it's something that they, they will apply to several, lots of other animals. Um, elephants, um, certain types of, certain types of birds, there, there's, there's a very limited amount of animals that can recognize that when they see a mirror that they're looking at their reflection, right? And when you do this to humans, um, white uh, babies up to 15 months old, um, the majority of white babies you know, are able to recognize, eventually recognize that they're looking at their own reflection, that it's them. You go to countries like Kenya, you go to, and the, uh, the black population uh, those some kids still can't even recognize that it's a reflection at five years old. Uh, the majority can't recognize that it's their own reflection. Now I understand when you're getting into ages like f four or five years old, there's going to be some cultural things, obviously. But when you pu put it in comparison to someone that's under two years old, you know, they're not even one year old, and they can recognize this, and yet you go to Kenya and suddenly they can't, it, well, it says something about the way that people uh, relate to themselves and how they relate to the rest of the world. Um, this may be why the concept of Ubuntu works so well in places like Kenya. The concept of Ubuntu is I am because we are. There, there's definitely a huge cultural difference. And that kind of concept of Ubuntu is being attempted to be inserted into our government. Our government is not based off of I am because we are. Our, our government is based off of, off of, I am because I am. And so, if there is any sort of biological component, um, any sort of genetic component, to people tilting towards, towards one type of of government, way of living, etc. If there's any sort of biological element to that at all, it makes sense as to why some of the black populations in this country are struggling like they are with a system that basically says, I am because I am. You know? I am because we are is... is <laughs> And some people will, will try to say, state that the, uni the values in the United States are supposed to be, I am because we are, but that's not how it's looked at. That's not really how it's looked at. Just look at the way that people are responding to when anything negative is said about the way this country functions. Look at the way that people react. So... You know, I understand what this article is trying to say. 
but it's going to be bringing up facts from those that are really racist and those who think that uh, white people are actually superior and Asian people are actually superior, it's going to bring those people out more and those kind of arguments from those people are going to be brought out more. Now maybe this stuff needs to be brought to a head. Maybe it's, you know, it's like waiting for a pimple to come to a head so you can squeeze it, you know? Maybe that's, maybe that needs to happen. Um, maybe that's what, maybe that's what articles like this are really, there. maybe that's a, 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 a true thing that people are trying to accomplish. And if that's the case, well, you're doing a good job at it. I just don't see how it's going to end well. Especially when there are going to be some facts that people start to bring up that, well, it, it's it's not going to help your it's not going to help your narrative. It's going to help this the the na the white nationalist narratives. I'd rather not see that happen. I'd rather not see more people start tilting towards the white nationalist narrative. I'd rather not see pe more people tilt towards the white supremacist narrative. I'd rather not see that. But articles like this are going to bring them out. They're going to make people who normally weren't on that side become towards that side. So let's continue. Shall we? Anyone who professes to care about America's alleged values should be fighting to extend them to you to those they've their Okay, I need to switch modes or something because I, I read that and I'm not understanding it. I'm having a comprehension issue just like I did with the uh... <laughs> desserts. <laughs> oh, that was so bad. All right, all right. Anyone who professes to care about America's alleged values should be fighting to extend them to those they're deprived. If they aren't full of shit, that is. Um. That's a that's a really that statement is really packed with a bunch of crap. Um <clears throat> To those they're, that they're they are deprived. Um <clears throat> depends on how you do it it depends that that depends on so many things there's so many factors to that you know how do you accomplish that goal there's man that's just so packed that's you know oh have you stopped beating your wife that's the kind of statement that is You know, should we have, okay, if it's saying that we should have a a safety net, absolutely. If it's saying that we should uh, be trying to help those that are struggling, absolutely. Absolutely. But if it's saying that, well, we should, we should give someone a job because statistically this person belongs to this group and therefore even if they're not qualified, they should get the job anyway, uh, no. Oh, they should get this position because, well, you know, according to the progressive stack, they should. No. That's where this whole thing gets so messy. Oh, you're so messy. Messy Marvin. Okay. Let's continue. And while the protest at the heart of, of all of this isn't about the anthem or the flag, 
It is about calling on America to live up to its self-professed values. Well, that's a fa- that, you know what? That's a f- I I can't complain about that statement. That's a that's a fair statement. Really, they've got they've got a script where when you highlight something, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's some smart coding, I'll tell you that. Um, anyway, as long as black people are killed by cops on the streets or left to wither away in the stages, states' cages without recourse, that anthem and flag represent promises unfulfilled for millions of Americans. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. With the with this, but I I also need to state that we need to work with why so many black people end up in those positions, and it's not just a bunch of white people's fault, you know. Yes, white people are are partially at fault to some of this. Okay, that we we share the blame. But it's not all our fault. And that's, and when articles like this kind of make it sound like it's all our fault. You know, I, we, have, we have way too many people in prison. It's ridiculous, the, the amount of people we have in prison. We, there are so many things that are illegal that shouldn't be illegal. Especially things related to drugs. Okay, I, 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 we need to legalize drugs. The keeping, ha, this whole war on drugs is probably the, the biggest, biggest reason why we have this many people in prison. It, and the war, I, I, and I'm going to state this, and I've said it before, the war on drugs is racist because there are races that are loosely connected to to different uh, cultures. And there are a number of types of cultures that alcohol is not their thing. Okay? If, if you want to attach a culture to a race, then alcohol is white culture's drug. And that's the only one that we've allowed to be legal, as far as street drugs, right? That needs to change. That absolutely needs to change. So understand this, white supremacy, as in the structures of opportunity, the legacy of ongoing oppression of non-whites, and the asymmetrical hoarding of resources by whites. Ow. Uh. Oh, another just ridiculously packed statement. Have you have you stopped beating your wife? Yes or no? It, the structures of opportunity. We are we have everyone we we have equal opportunity. The problem is how do people feel? within the culture they come from? How do they feel what their opportunities are within the culture they come from? That's what needs to, that's one of the big things that need to be addressed. But, you know, on a legal side, the, stru- the structures of opportunity, we have equal opportunity right now. Okay, there are social issues that need to be worked on. And this type of mindset that says things like this, think that social issues can be solved by some sort of legality. And all that's going to do is make people more pissed off. So the legacy of ongoing oppression of non-whites and the asymmetrical hoarding of resources by whites Hoarding of the resources. What, 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 what are people supposed to do then? 
oh well I have I have this this here I should just give I should give my house to black people I should just give money to random black people like like what BLM has been uh, pushing uh, you know the the that checklist of things that that uh, white people should do to to help black people oh give them your house give them your no that's that's what a what a crock sorry so the asymmetrical hoarding of resources by whites is what affords us the privilege that limit our view making a peaceful act of protest seem offensive in spite of the broader context of what's being uh, protested okay I, I I'll, I'll agree with with this part here you know uh, this these the <laughs> You can't get any more peaceful than than kneeling during a pledge, or just not, you know, not standing for a pledge. That you you don't get any more peaceful than that. For anyone to claim otherwise, I I don't know what to tell you. What? How do you? How, for those of you who think it's just wrong the way that that people are are protesting in this way, what would be a better way to you? What, what what is a, what is a better way to do that that actually gets noticed or is your whole thing that well they should protest in a way that doesn't get noticed well then that destroys the the point in doing a protest the point of a protest is to get noticed so you know i understand people being p really pissed off about blocking freeway traffic Okay, that's stopping people from getting to work. It's 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 a fucked up way to do it. Um, I understand people getting pissed off that there are violent protests. Yeah, that's not a way to go at all. But something like this, come on now. And the ignorant result of that privilege was on full display Sunday as white players stood next to their black teammates no no just no no you can't you don't break things apart like that so let's at least be clear what those players stood for on Sunday was white supremacy full stop if you if you're modifying what white supremacy means Okay, if, if, if you're modifying it to be something where you're talking about a system that looks at the majority of the country as being the majority of the country, then yeah, I guess you could say that. But for most people, when you say white supremacy... It's this notion that white people are superior to everyone else. That's what white supremacy normally means to the non-scholarly, the to to those that uh, haven't studied sociology courses and learned new definitions to words and phrases. Okay, white supremacy to most people means this idea that white people are superior to everyone else, and. There are there are few people who actually have that kind of strong belief. I'm sorry. Now, if you're wanting to bring out those that do have that kind of belief and you're wanting people to go towards that, you're doing a good job. Because that's exactly what this kind of article does. I don't think it's 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 saddening to me how so many people don't seem to get that this this is exactly what this kind of article does. Anyway, I guess I've went on enough about it. It's it's over a 30-minute video, and I'm not going to edit it. I'm going to leave the stupid errors where I showed how a complete lack of reading comprehension when I read uh, dessert when I read I read deserts as desserts. So.